Les from Delta, and today we're going to talk about how to do a reference measurement on your Fisher X-ray. Now, before we start talking about how to do a reference, let's talk about why you want to do a reference. So what the reference measurement does is it takes two long measurements on two different saturated elements, one of those being silver and one being copper. The reason why these two elements are used is because, as you can see from this spectrum, they're the farthest out on the spectrum. So by knowing the relative intensities of both of these elements, you can then shift your entire spectrum up or down as needed, dependent upon the age of your tube, the age of your detector, things like that. This is going to give you a really good baseline for going in and then calibrating any of your other applications. This may be all you need to bring a calibration back into expected tolerances. You may still need to do more after that, but this is always a good place to start. So let's talk about how to do this. All right, to do a reference measurement, you are going to need your pure element card. Every Fisher should come with one of these pure element cards. If it didn't, let us know. We can help you out and get you just the elements that you need uh, for your applications or even just for your reference measurement. So now we come up to the general menu. And if we come all the way down here to where it says reference measurement, that'll bring up the reference measurement dialog box. A couple of things to note. First off, it's going to show you the last time that a reference was done and any kind of offset or gain that was done the last time. For the most part, these offset and gains, and sometimes there is a voltage as well, uh, depending on what version of FTM you're using. But usually these two to three numbers are only important to uh, a technician and they can start help to dial in and diagnose any problems. I have this hooked up to an XDL with a programmable stage. So I'm going to show you also how to program in the X and Y positions of your two elements, uh, kind of automate that and make things just a little bit easier slash quicker because I won't have to stand here and watch it the whole time. If you don't have a programmable stage, obviously you're going to have to manually move around your element card. Let's double check that I'm on the right one. Yep. So we're going to start here on silver. And you can see right here where it says use reference specimen silver. If you have a manual stage, you're just going to go right to start reference. With a programmable stage, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to hit AG, XY position, and that's going to store that. Now I'm going to move over to copper, depending on what version of the pure element card you have. Uh, copper might be right next to silver, or it may be in another row uh, farther down. So another reason I like programming it in. And we're going to hit copper XY position. And now we're going to start reference. And as you can see, because I programmed those in, it's going to shift all the way back down and restart at silver. If you're doing this manually, you'll just position silver and press start. Typically, this is going to be a 70 to 100 second measurement time, again, depending on the age of your unit and what version of FTM you have will decide that value. Don't be surprised if sometimes you get through silver and it restarts counting and does a series of short four second measurements just means that for whatever reason, your spectrum needed a little bit more of a shift than the software was initially 
expecting, and that's okay. Now I finished with the silver, and you can see it just zipped on over to copper. The only time that you really want to worry is if you get an error, or if when you're doing the automated, you never move over to the copper. Now, if it never asks for copper, that's a problem. And by never, I mean within the next five to 10 minutes, it should do that. One other quick thing to note is do not use the start button on the front of the x-ray to start your reference measurement. The only way to start a reference measurement is from the start reference button. And now that it's finished, you can see that it says reference, okay, except, and obviously at this point, you want to hit the okay button. The rest of the reference window will close out and you are all set. Les here, just wanted to thank you for stopping by. I know your time is really valuable, so I'm only gonna take up a couple seconds of it. Just wanted you to know that there really are people here ready to help you. If you can't find what you're looking for here, you have the option of calling us, emailing us, or messaging us. Looking forward to hearing from you if you need any help.